Hey everybody, I'm Chris Niosi, creator, writer, and uh, animator, everything ever, voice of Kerberfer on, uh, on Tome. And uh, for this episode commentary, I am joined by... Liz Losey, also known as Blazooka. I'm the script supervisor, and I find all the fonts for the characters, and general multi-purpose criminal element. <laughs> it's true. She also uh, does all the uh, line work and coloring for the uh, official artwork that you guys see on the Facebook page and DeviantArt and everything. Um, that's me. And uh, Oh, and the uh, Ask Her blog as well. Oh, yeah. Ask Kerberfer. That's, that's ask-kerberfer.tumblr.com. It's a role-playing slash in-character. I don't know if I can call it like role-playing because it's your character and I'm answering it how you would. So It's, it's kind officially of, sanctioned, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> officially, uh, do not, don't accept anything except for officially licensed tone merchandise. That <laughs> I've been trying to get him to make a Kerberfer doll, but he won't do it. I know, we need to do more merchandise at some point. <laughs> but yeah, Liz has been a, a huge help. She's kind of like my general assistant on the show, and she's also part of the reason the show exists in the first place. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, as I told the story in the uh, first episode commentary, she was the one who suggested, yeah, you should just do it as a show. You should just, just do, do it. That. Just do it. Like, do it. Do it. Well, do it. Do okay. it. Okay, and then, uh, you know, here we are. So here we are at episode seven. Oh my god, we're finally here. I don't even know where to start. Okay, so... Um, I've mentioned many other times in the other commentary, so this was one of the first... This was one of the eight original scripts that I wrote before we did any of the episodes at all. Yeah, did, um, did you uh, did you already tell them about how you basically sat down and wrote out everything else at one, like at one time during that big uh, hurricane a couple of years ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't think I mentioned the hurricane, but yeah, was it was it hurricane? It wasn't Katrina. It wasn't. Was it? No, hell no, it wasn't Katrina. It was like 2007, Squire. No. Um, she, she she calls me Squire, by the way. That is my pet name for him. I will fight you. <laughs> shut the uh, shut shut. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, you, you basically, it was bunk, during a bunch of power outages and stuff, you uh, had sat down with your laptop and wrote all the script for Tome, and like, I'm like, good, you, you do it, just shut up and animate it, do it, like, oh, okay, I'm Curb, and I, oh, don't hurt me, okay, like, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> good. So, so I wrote uh, eight scripts, this was originally episode six, because uh, obviously four was added later, um, so... Basically, I had started working on the show in the summer of 2011 uh, when the hurricane had happened, and I took all this time to make all the assets, and I wrote all these episode scripts. I did the first two and the first short, and then I got into working on episode three at the beginning of 2012. And when I got to the end of working on it, um, I was experiencing some issues. I, I wasn't entirely satisfied with how it turned out, and in particular, I was really worried that I was writing Flame Girl as like a bad lead female character I was and thankfully episode three was was uh, uh, received a lot better than I was expecting uh, yeah, he was really really hard on himself for three it was kind of disappointing it was like it's gonna yeah. be okay it's gonna be okay <laughs> I was I was I really was really hard on myself about it and but I decided okay I need to be a little more proactive about this I mean when I started episode three I, I switched to some of the new art assets and I tried to make a lot of improvements just from there on out, and um, one of the things I decided was I needed a lot more help with, uh, you know, making sure the scripts were good, because I wrote all eight of those scripts at the beginning and just went straight ahead with them and didn't make any altercations. But when we did four, uh, which was the first new episode I had written since those original eight, that was the first time that I brought Liz on directly to help with script supervision. So Liz, do you want to talk a little bit about, like, what that entails exactly? Sure. Um... I'm kind of a loudmouth. I interject myself into things a lot, like, hey, this is my opinion, and you should listen to it because I'm right, so shut up. So when Curb was showing me the scripts of these things, I would make suggestions, like changes, not like outright, like, hey, this shouldn't happen, this should, or, you know, give Flame Girl an afro or something stupid like that. It was, you know, grammatical stuff or, you know, fixing some of Nylox, ye olde English. But um, with Seven, I think that was the first one I really, like, put my foot down, like, look, dude, you can't, no, that's not going to make any sense, you know, it's, it's you're writing her into a corner, you know, you're making her too feminine, like, what, I, I, I both love and hate myself for liking the show, but uh, I remember watching Inuyasha as a teenager, and the impression that Kagome left on me of, oh, help me, help me, except I'm a badass and can fight when it's convenient for the plot, it doesn't work that way, I don't, I hate when think people do that, so, do you want me to talk about how you originally had this episode set up, or do you not want to mess with that one, or? Well, no, we, we, we can talk a little bit about okay. that. Yeah, I, I should say beforehand, and I, I was waiting for this joke, I've been waiting for a long time to say this. Episode 7 of Tome, this thing that you are watching and listening to right now, this is probably the most heavily drafted thing I have ever written in my life. 
I think we went over it like five or six times easily. Yeah, like, at, at least. Sitting like, up, we, like we, talking we, about it, going over plot points, going over yeah. dialogue, going over, you know, appearances and looming over cliffs and, you know, whatever. It, was, it took forever <laughs> to figure out. Yeah, we, we seriously painstakingly went through every single scene, every single line, every single intention, everything that happened in this episode, we went back and refined. Now, I should mention that the events that, and, and obviously you, if, you've, if you're listening to this, you've watched the episode already, um, so I'm not spoiling anything here. Alpha being conflicted about, you know, entering the tournament and being scared that he might hurt people because of the forbidden power. Neomutant showing up and having a, some sort of real-life connection to Flamey. Uh, Flamey having this mysterious sort of purple fire that, you know, the, uh, the origin and, and exactly what it is is still kind of up in the air. Uh, etc. You know, Neo being defeated, Demon Alpha showing up again, and then ultimately Alpha and Flamey becoming uh, partners for the tournament. All of those things were always intended to happen, so we did not rewrite the entire story in terms of like, you know, we weren't going, going back and like, you know, retconning or proactively changing anything that much from what I had set in place. But in terms of there was a lot dialogue. of there was a lot of aesthetic stuff that was changed around. I mean, yeah. stuff that wasn't completely core to the plot, but could have been presented a lot better, or yes. in a lot more entertaining fashion than just oh this happens, then this happens, then this happens. It's not like a car ride. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? There we are. We're here. Poof. And it's, it's done. <laughs> In, uh, in, in particular, uh, we've, we've passed it by this point, but the scene before Neo Mutant showed up here where it was just uh, Flamey and Alpha by themselves, uh, that scene we rewrote, I think, probably the most uh, and graphically changed the most. There were just a lot of things. And we recorded the most, too. I, I, I should mention, uh, not just Liz, too. Liz, Liz has really helped out tremendously with this episode, but everybody worked so, so hard on this because... Uh, episode six, the Nylock episode before this, was the most universally well received episode of the show we had, and I was deathly afraid. And I, you know, Liz can attest to this too. I was, I was really afraid that this one was not going to live up to the same expectations because setting the bar too high, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nylock was already the most popular character. Flamey and Alpha were kind of lower on the scale of popularity, so I was like, okay, this is the first one that doesn't have Nylock in it. It's all about Alpha and Flamey, and particularly Flamey. And, and I was nervous. I was really, really nervous about how this was going to be received. But thankfully, uh, as it, uh, we've gotten, at the time of recording this, it's been up for about a week now. People really liked it. People love really her hairstyle, really, too. Yeah. That's not spoiling anything either, because you've already watched it, hopefully. Yeah. That's, uh, you, you should explain why you, why you gave her a different hairstyle. I mean, right, obviously, okay. it's central to the plot, but go, go yeah, ahead. Well, you know what? Actually, we'll, 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 be, we'll be getting up to it. I'll save it for a little while, because okay. we're, we're going to be okay. there in a few minutes. Do you want me to talk but, about uh, script stuff? That's important, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, well, I mentioned earlier that, that first scene. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, that first scene where it was just Alpha and Flamey by themselves at the campfire. There was a lot of change to that one, too, because uh, it was mostly... Um, honestly, I, I think the original draft was more of um, it was uh, Flame Girl kind of talking to herself and Alpha just kind of listening to her. She was basically, oh, I have so many problems with life and it's so hard. And it was kind of basically, Craig was trying to set it up to foreshadow where um, New Mutant was coming in because you have know, a whole real life problems thing. That's obviously Neo and Flamey know each other, you know, in person for some unknown reason that we haven't, you know, obviously by the time this episode haven't set up yet. Um, the way I changed it around was that it was it was more of a it's kind of a calibre balancing like they, they were venting to each other, not just, you know, he only sit here and tell you about my problems all day. That way it's not it's actually some decent exposition. Um I think at one point Curb wanted them to like actually what was it? He didn't want them to like you know smooch or anything, but it was, there was a lot more heavily implied romantic stuff. And I was like, well, if they're focusing more on just venting problems out, it wouldn't be just oh here's my problem, here's my problem. By the way, I love you. Like it wouldn't. And, and, and that isn't. <laughs> well, not in that scene, but no, no, no. Uh, in in the earliest draft of this, I actually did want to go in the in the direction of having them both. Uh, get together at the end of the episode in addition to becoming partners for the tournament but I think that ultimately we just decided that that was too far of a stretch and it was a little bit too I browbeat uh, him so hard I'm not even ashamed yeah. to admit I gave him so much help for that it's like you are not going to make them get together in this episode there's a lot of heavily implied like leaning toward it, like it's really sweet but you're not going to like all of a sudden we, uh, we smooch smooch now smooch over the place yeah make out no stop no absolutely not also, uh, we saw Archie a little while ago. Uh, I think Archie and Kerber for scenes in this episode were the only thing that went pretty much entirely unchanged. And uh, oh no, no, because no, the, the arrows part, the arrows part. I was like, well, what are you gonna make him say? You have to make him all awkward. Like I don't know. Look at all these bunch of arrows I got. I got fire like arrows. fire arrows. <laughs> nice arrow. Yeah, uh, Micah, right? It was, it was Micah Solicide. Yeah, he was just so so funny. I, I didn't know one. who I was gonna have for. Uh, 
for Archie until way later down the line, and uh, I'd wanted to work with Micah again. I worked with him on uh, Balancing Act, where he played actually the Alpha equivalent character, funnily enough, and um, I wanted to have him in here somewhere, and, and thankfully uh, Archie worked out perfectly. Also, a uh, little shot I hear while, while I'm noticing it, uh, Chris O'Neill and uh, Zach Cattle, who these characters are in reference to, uh, they uh, they helped out a lot actually starting from that episode three point I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, with suggesting on things to make it visually better and, and certain things. They're to very, very mind, helpful, so. like critique wise. Yes, they were there. Yeah, so, so big thanks to them. And that was my little tribute to them. OK, this is the big scene. This is the big one that I, I rewrote the entire damn thing. Like, it was, I actually uh, went. We're when, more like unwrote, technically, because yeah, there's no dialogue. Right, right, right. No, no, no. Yes, there was going to be a lot of, like, talking to talk, how dare you, uh, yeah, show, uh, whatever. It's a bunch of stupid, pointless dialogue. And I wanted one of uh, one of the biggest things in the series is that a lot of stuff is told and not shown. And I'm trying to hammer in more, like, I want things to be shown and not told, where people, the audience either can, like, you know, have their own ideas what's going on they can formulate the you know, the plot better in their heads versus like having it be told directly to them mm-hmm. um this scene was really big because this is the big thing that i made him change at the end not, not asked him to like no you're not doing this no um when this happened the the, the, the flame girl in, in the alpha thing when he, when she's enveloped inside the virus shroud he, curb originally had it to where they were going to kiss and uh the strange purple thing was going to counteract you know, the, the virus or whatever it is that's going on with alpha right now um I uh, made him rewrite it just so that he, they just had some kind of contact. They're not making out. They're not smooching. But as you can see, there goes her hair. Oh man, it's all it's it's, it's great. There you go, Curb. You, you, you have fun with that. Explain that. Why is that? Yeah. Like? So uh, I knew that this was going to be where uh, Raven Freak, as many people figured out, Raven Freak implanted this thing into her in the third episode when he's disguised as Alpha. And um, I decided when I was working on episode three by that point, okay, I am so tired of drawing Flamey's hair. I love the design, but I cannot draw the stupid thing anymore. But you call it the hair loopies, right? The hair loopies. The hair loopies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which is an Avatar reference. But uh, yeah, so I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to have Raven Freak uh, implanted in her hair, which if you'll notice, he's running his, his fingers through her hair. So that when this happens, the hair is burned off, and this design chain ha- change happened, and it seemed like for the most part, people really, really enjoy. There was uh, so much the new, fan the art. Design. The first like half hour of the episode was out. There was like already people <laughs> yes. drawing like five or six pictures of people drawing flame using hair. It was really cute. Another shout out, by the way, here, uh, uh, Chris Guerrero, uh, who uh, did me a big favor. And uh, this is another character. Uh, Neo Mutant, I had another actor lined up for for many years, believe it or not, uh, since I conceptualized this new version of the story, and the person was unavailable. Uh, Guerrero was uh, was available at like the very last second and uh, did me a huge favor, did an amazing performance. I loved what he did with Neo Mutant. Yeah, speaking, like, speaking of Neo Mutant, I think we did another thing where uh, we, we changed his character around a lot, too. He was originally going to be a lot more forward with his advances towards Flamey, but uh, we yes, kind of dialed that true. down a little bit. It was yeah, like there's, oh, there's so much. There's so much to say about this episode that you guys. Th- th- this was a, just everything was so so different, and we really we wanted to make this a good episode for Flamey. We wanted to make it an even better episode than than 06. You know, just strive to make it better. I think that yeah, we we didn't even have like she. We wrote in that she originally was was just kind of like stand by while the virus took over Alpha, but they ended up actually getting a little bit of a skirmish there. Um, I added a bunch of elements that actually convey the fact that they are in a game, like the the block feature that was on the immune for. A while before he broke it, the uh, the message thing that popped up when Alpha's character was locked down, and then uh, Neo Mutant interrupting that with his own electricity hacky stuff. So there's a lot yeah, of game elements here too. Yeah, a lot of little things. <laughs> yeah, a lot of little things like that. Everything that happened in this episode had like a lot of thought yeah. put into it. Yeah, all significant. I mean, I try to put significance in everything that happens, but we tried to make everything meaningful and have a lot of thought into it. Um, this scene actually, I think this is this is one part that was relatively unchanged. Yeah, I made Curb a little more angry. Like I was trying to like, well, he at first he was. I made a little more a little more of a human character because he first he's like, well, tsh, I'm I'm all upset about it, but no, it's fine. Tsh, shut up. I'll just do whatever. Good. Don't don't worry about it. Like he's you know he's yeah. trying to be himself at the same time he's very upset. It's pretty heavy, and you know it's it's interesting too. I said this on the episode six commentary. I find that while I'm animating Curb during some of these heavy scenes, I tend to be going through something kind of similar to it. Good. <laughs> Which is really bizarre, but uh, you know. And then uh, he has the the typical like the anime, anime. hair. You can't, that you can't see my my yeah. eyes look there. <laughs> Good. But uh, but yeah. So this is this is the last of the the pre tournament episodes five, six, and seven. I'm really really proud of all of these, and in particular, I'm really proud of this one. Um, as we have these this this cute little. Uh, the ending here is the best part because you have like this really grumpy curb face like oh but all of a sudden din, 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 this happy little music is playing like oh good <laughs> and, and Archie is just so excited <laughs> yeah it's great um, 
Big, uh, b another big thanks to, God, just everybody. I was going to say Rocket Ship Resort, who let me use this song, which I thought fit Alpha and Flamey's dynamic really well. Uh, because it's not overly romantic. It's, it's, it fits no, their no, character no. very well. A lot of people are it's, it's, yeah. complimenting this one, too. It's it's more about, uh, you know, just their, their camaraderie and then helping each other out and, you know, leading into uh, the Gemini tournament, which we're going to get to soon. So, you know, sit tight. But, yep, yep. God, I, I, God, everybody. Tombstone, who did me a favor and did a little guest music track in there. Uh, uh, Kadget, obviously, who did all the music. Shady, who's... And Anna, Anna was, like, had her arm broken at one point when she was recording some of this stuff. Shady was killing himself doing the screaming and the sound design. Oh, God, I'm gonna, like, forget somebody. Just just everybody. Everybody. Anybody involved. It's like, especially some, uh, the, some of the Wachow guys give a lot of feedback early on. Uh, when, right, talking, like, when talking, when oh, talking about, and yeah, Mac too. Obviously, everyone had the, like, the the biggest and most helpful amount of feedback, uh, depending on how they wanted the characters to be expressed. It wasn't just me and Kurt, like all oh, this, like this, and this, and this. It was like we, we we went to several different people who were involved in it and and ran scripts by people and ran you know actions and and uh, and what characters were doing just to make sure it was good. And it was all this huge community effort. It was very very good. Yeah. So everybody, everybody that worked on this, if you're listening, thank you guys so much. And uh, that's it for us. So. Uh, Thanks for thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, check out another episode. Or the next one if it's up. Yep, yep. Next time the Gemini tournament begins.